Hey everyone, welcome to the Tech Desk Weekly. This is a weekly episode I'll be doing to summarize what's going on in the world of Apple, with some of my personal takes and experiences sprinkled in here and there. Today we're talking about Apple's latest updates, iOS 26.1 and iOS 18.7.2. And they're kind of two completely different updates even though they include the same security patches. One brings some new features and it's geared toward the latest iPhones and the other is for devices that can't update to iOS 26 or for users who haven't made that jump yet. Both are worth talking about, so let's take a quick look and see what's new, what's been fixed, and whether or not it's worth updating right now. So iOS 26.1 isn't a huge feature update. And while it does bring a few new things, it's mainly focused on like fine tuning areas that users found annoying. Apple really leaned into some small but noticeable quality of life improvements this time around. And one of the biggest additions in this update is the new liquid glass customization option, a visual tweak that lets you adjust how translucent the interface looks. The tinted option gives you a higher contrast with less see-through design, which should make text and icons a little bit easier to read overall. There's also a new swipe to stop option for alarms, which honestly should have been there years ago, and Apple added background security updates that install automatically so your phone stays protected without having to wait for a full iOS release. Overall, Apple's clearly refining the experience instead of dumping a bunch of new features here. And it's not a bad thing. After the big jump we got from iOS 26, a more stable and polished update is exactly what most people want and need. I've been running iOS 26.1 for a bit now, and so far it's been solid. Smooth performance, no major bugs, and no battery issues on my end. Now your experience can be a little bit different, but all I can tell you is that I've been using iOS 26.1 on three different iPhones, an iPhone 17 Pro Max, an iPhone 16 Pro Max, and a regular iPhone, and none of them show any signs of battery drain. Now if you want more details about iOS 26.1, make sure to check out my full breakdown video on YouTube. So now let's talk about iOS 18.7.2, and this one's geared more towards older iPhones, mainly for devices that can't run iOS 26, or for users who just aren't ready to make that jump yet. There aren't any new flashy features here, it's all about security. Apple released this update to patch vulnerabilities and keep those older devices protected. It includes fixes for things like the App Store, the Find My App, the Camera App, and Notes basically areas that could have been at risk if you stayed on an older iOS version. If you're still using something like an iPhone XR, XS, XS Max, I'd go ahead and install it. You won't notice anything new day to day, but behind the scenes, it's definitely keeping your iPhone safer. Think of it more of as a routine maintenance, nothing exciting, but definitely worth doing. So yeah, iOS 18.7.2 is mainly about keeping those older iPhones safe and secure. You're not getting any new features here, but you're getting peace of mind knowing that your device is protected with the latest security patches. Now, the big question, should you update? If you're already running iOS 26, I'd say go ahead and update to iOS 26.1. It's been solid for me so far, smoother animations, better reliability, and my screenshots are finally working again. And overall, it just feels a little bit more polished. I haven't noticed any major bugs or performance drops, and honestly, it's one of those updates that just makes your iPhone feel snappier. Now, if you're running iOS 18, I recommend at least installing iOS 18.7.2, especially if you're not ready to make the jump to iOS 26 yet. You're not getting any new features here, but those security patches are important. They fix vulnerabilities, like I mentioned before, in the App Store, the Find My App, the Camera App, and Notes. So even though you won't see anything new, your iPhone is definitely safer. Think of it this way. iOS 26.1 is about refining and tightening up things that are already there. A few new additions here and there, but mostly fixing little bugs that needed attention. And iOS 18.7.2, on the other hand, is about keeping your iPhone protected with the latest security patches. Both iOS 26.1 and iOS 18.7.2 have the latest security patches. So even if you're not ready to move up yet, at least install iOS 18.7.2. Either way, it's worth hitting that update button. Now, I know a lot of people are hesitant to update because of what they read in the headlines. But here's the thing two things are always true about these updates. One, headlines are designed to grab attention and they often over-exaggerate. And two, when people complain about battery drain, it's almost always right after they update. But here's the thing, a little battery drain after an update is completely normal. Your iPhone is re-indexing files, photos, apps, basically rebuilding everything behind the scenes. 
that process takes extra power, especially if you're actively using your phone while it's happening. Also, sometimes what people think is battery drain isn't the update at all. It's a weak battery finally showing its age. When a new update pushes the system just a little bit harder, it exposes batteries that were already struggling. It just wasn't as noticeable before. In any case, all I can tell you is what I mentioned earlier. I'm testing iOS 26.1 on three different iPhones, and I haven't seen any battery drain issues on any of them. So that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. I'll keep these on the shorter side for now, but as I get more comfortable with the podcast format, they'll probably get longer. We'll see how it goes. If you want more details on these updates, make sure to check out my full videos on YouTube. Also, be sure to tune in next week. I'll be talking about some of the rumored Apple products that could be announced soon, like a new HomePod mini, updated AirTags, and maybe even something completely unexpected. If you found this episode helpful, subscribe on YouTube or follow the Tech Desk Weekly wherever you listen to your podcast. Every follow, view, and share really helps me keep creating Apple content each week. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next one.